I'm Abby McMath from Pace High School, and I'm here interviewing Miss Shelby Grice, who is the PA in the cardiology department at Ascension Sacred Heart Hospital. Hello. And today I'm talking to her about energy drinks and their effects on kids' hearts. Are they dangerous or are they harmless? We know the heart muscle has an electrical side and a plumbing side. How does caffeine affect the heart? So caffeine is actually a stimulant. What it does is it can trigger these things to kind of go in overdrive. So what can happen is the electrical system is most affected by caffeine, more so than the plumbing aspect. But the electrical aspect is very affected because what can happen is you can have extra beats that are called supraventricular beats or ectopy, where you have these extra contractions and such that can occur and cause mild arrhythmia type episodes. And you can have issues with the arteries themselves. Sometimes you can have just temporary elevation and pressures causing increases in systolic and diastolic blood pressure and other times with long-term caffeine consumption at high high doses you can have what is believed to be some hardening of the arteries through many years so your caffeine levels in your typical cup of coffee can vary from 80 to maybe 100 milligrams but the red bull has 111 milligrams of caffeine the monster has 160 milligrams so what is considered a dangerous level of caffeine people recommend typically less than 200 milligrams of caffeine consumption in one 24-hour time period however the recommendation is much lower with anybody with any type of comorbidity so does do other stimulants have interacting effects with your heart other than caffeine it's mainly all of it when you when you put it all together so it's the the abnormal sweeteners you know the artificial sweeteners in combination with the caffeine itself and then other stimulants such as taurine can all come together and be negatively affecting the heart muscle itself so i conducted a survey at my high school about energy drinks i asked for their name and grade level and then i asked if they drank energy drinks i had 171 respondents and 73 percent said they did 23 percent said they did not and 5% said that they used to, but they don't anymore. I asked how often they drink energy drinks, and 20% said never. 16% said a couple times a year. 20% said monthly. 30% said weekly. And 13% said they drank energy drinks daily. Does it make a difference, like, the age of your heart or the size of your body, like, with caffeine's impact? It can. So not necessarily the age, but a 220 pound, six foot two male is going to be much less affected by 180 milligrams of caffeine. The smaller, you know, tiny female is going to be much more affected by a higher amount of caffeine than the larger male would be typically. So have you had cases where it seems like energy drinks were at least a contributing factor in a younger person's heart acting up? I have had the young, um, you know, 19 to 20 something year old patient that has come in. They're typically, their complaint is they feel anxious and they feel palpitations. What happens frequently is the caffeine is a stimulant that significantly stimulates their heart rate. I see frequent minor arrhythmia type things that cause patients to feel fluttering in their chest. They feel kind of an anxious type feeling. It can make them feel short of breath. And depending on how much of these energy drinks they're drinking and how much caffeine they're getting throughout their day, they tend to have them pretty frequently. And some of my younger patients have had some brief intervals where their blood pressure seems to elevate. Palpitations is probably one of the more common reasons I see patients. So we frequently have conversations about caffeine consumption, um, water consumption to counteract some of that caffeine and things like that. This is a very prevalent issue. Not always caused by energy drinks, but frequently, um, frequently that is the case. I have been taking care of a lot of people where at times we have had to put them on what we call beta blockers, which are rate slowing medications to help counteract some of these palpitations that people are experiencing. Many times with the energy drinks, I don't necessarily see fatal arrhythmias per se. However, we see these extra beats, early beats really pick up. And what can happen is if somebody has multiple energy drinks or if somebody has an underlying pre-existing condition that we don't know about, any of that can trigger significant problems because you can have the patient develop these extra beats and early beats and if they continue to increase their caffeine consumption because they adapt to the amount of caffeine and they require more and more, at times you can develop somewhat more prolonged arrhythmias. And if you go much past the normal recommendations, so if you start drinking more than one energy drink a day, two and three energy drinks a day, you can develop more concerning prolonged abnormal heart rhythms that could potentially cause somebody to pass out 
Does it seem like patients are aware of the caffeine content in the various beverages? Some of the younger patients just haven't ever looked into it. They sometimes have the mentality of nothing can go wrong. They haven't had anything go wrong with them yet, so they think that nothing can. And so many times they just haven't even thought about reading the label. All their friends or peers drink these drinks. Their biggest concern is getting through the test they have the next day. And if that means staying up all night with one to two energy drinks, they do it at that time. I don't think they think about the long-term issues, and I don't think they're really aware of how much. So talking to people, because you said you've been doing this for six years. Mm -hmm. So talking to cardiologists who maybe have been practicing for 20, 30, 40 years, have they seen like an increase in this kind of thing, like things that seem to be caused by energy drinks? I do think it got slightly worse because we did start to have an increase in patients that were drinking one energy drink to start their day. And then they still would have their sodas, coffee, you know, random food items that would increase their caffeine consumption. So it it does seem to be something that has picked up. I know the cardiologist that's done a lot of training with me did frequently mention to his patients specifically to avoid energy drinks on numerous occasions. He makes a point to specifically state that he does not recommend energy drinks. There's just not a lot of good that comes from them. There's so many chemicals and additives in these drinks, more than just the caffeine, the taurine, the sweeteners, you know, all the different variations of things. These drinks taste funny because they have a lot of odd chemicals in them, and they're designed to really stimulate you in an unhealthy way for an acute period of time, which is why you end up having this sensation of like a peak where you feel very hyperactive, you know, maybe a burst of energy, possibly a little anxious, why some people will use them to get their energy levels up so they can go and do an effective workout. And typically that comes with a crash. It comes with your heart rate plummeting back down, your blood pressure kind of slowly tapers down, you develop significant fatigue, and typically pretty profound dehydration, which has a list of problems in and of itself. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Absolutely, I've enjoyed it. Now let's talk to a few students about their experiences with energy drinks. So do you drink energy drinks, Zoe? I actually don't drink energy drinks anymore. About freshman, sophomore year, and junior year, I was very big on energy drinks. It really consisted of most of my diet, to be honest, and I just felt so sick all the time. Like. I had like a lot of heart palpitations and it definitely amped my anxiety and then I would have a whole bunch of energy and then I'd crash. At the time I was doing boxing, I was very active, I was in multiple sports and I would crash in the middle of practice and then I wouldn't be able to perform. And another reason I decided to stop, my dad was a very big um, energy drink drinker, especially of Red Bull and He had a lot of, like, sleep problems. He didn't sleep well, and he also suffered with a lot of anxiety as well. And uh, I was about nine when my dad passed away. One, we're not exactly, like, certain of what it was, but we do believe that it was a mixture of um, all the wear and tear that he did on his body, plus energy drinks and a few other bad habits that he had that uh, took him out. But... Yeah, so that was another big reason I decided to stop because not only did I feel sick all the time, but it was one of probably the causes why my dad's heart just suddenly stopped. Hi, my name is Tristan and I'm a junior here at Pace High. I drink energy drinks about once a day. I was diagnosed with ADHD, uh, I think it was around 14. For me, I can, as far as focusing goes with an energy drink, I can't definitively say that yes, it works and it helps me focus. Maybe a little more focused. Hi, I'm Samori. I'm a junior at Pace High School and I'd say that I drink energy drinks about one or twice a week. I recently tried the Cosmic Stardust or Moon Dust one, but I think my favorite is probably the Cherry Slushy one. I don't know. But they have like 200 milligrams of caffeine in it. I, I don't know if that's bad or not. Is that bad? 